And in simplest terms, obstructive sleep apnea is someone who stops breathing while they sleep. As you sleep, your brain is always monitoring uh, your breathing. If, it's, if your brain sees you're not getting enough air into your lungs, it's going to wake you up. Uh, the good news is you don't suffocate in your sleep because of that. The bad news is uh, your sleep is very disrupted. You're unable to get into a good deep sleep and stay there. So sleep tends to be very disrupted, very unrefreshing. Uh, obstructive sleep apnea not only causes significant daytime sleepiness, it also has other significant health effects. It's been directly tied to the development of high blood pressure. It's been tied to an increase, increased risk of diabetes, heart attack, stroke, uh, and even though obesity is one of the main causes of sleep apnea, we now know that if you have sleep apnea, you're more likely to become even more obese. It's been tied to uh, obesity. Although uh, it can be somewhat uh, intimidating coming in for an overnight sleep study, we try and make it as comfortable as possible. Our, our laboratory rooms look very similar to a hotel room. Each room has its own bathroom. They're soundproof, so you don't have to hear someone snoring next to you. Uh, and even though you have all these wires from head to toe, all these wires go to a single plug. So if you have to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, it's not a big deal. And I'm always amazed that uh, although, uh, again, this can be uh, you know, somewhat intimidating, it's not your own bedroom, you're all wired up, uh, the vast majority of patients sleep fairly well and we're able to get the information we need to make an accurate diagnosis. When we talk about treatment options for sleep apnea, we start with the behavioral things. Again, the majority of sleep apnea we see is tied to excessive weight. So obviously, uh, serious effort at, at losing weight is, is step one. In terms of other behavioral interventions, it's important to uh, quit smoking if you smoke. Uh, you need to avoid excessive sedatives, including alcohol. Alcohol will always worsen mm -hmm. obstructive apnea, and, and people usually know this because if, if people are snorers and they drink alcohol, the snoring is almost always worse. Uh, and if the snoring is worse, uh, the worse apnea goes hand in hand with that. Our gold standard treatment is something called continuous positive airway pressure, or CPAP. Uh, and this is a machine that generates uh, air under pressure. Uh, the air goes through a hose, which goes to a mask that fits over someone's nose or mouth. And people literally look like a fighter pilot wearing one of these devices. And it's not an easy treatment. About half the people who are prescribed the machine do not use them consistently. Uh, but we feel that with close follow-up and close attention, we can get the majority of people to tolerate this therapy. And once they can tolerate it, once they can fall asleep with the machine in place and see the benefits, they should note improvement in sleep quality. They should wake up more refreshed. Uh, they'll see, uh, on average, a 10 millimeter mercury drop in their blood pressure. Um, and uh, what we encourage people is to remember uh, that with treating their sleep apnea, they're reducing their long-term health risks for uh, heart attack, stroke, uh, and even death. Mm -hmm. If we think about other treatments for sleep apnea, for those who uh, have tried CPAP and can tolerate it, there are surgical options uh, that uh, work well for some patients, especially younger patients with enlarged tonsils. There are also oral appliances, basically bite splints. It looks similar to a mouth guard a basketball player would wear or a boxer would wear that holds the lower jaw forward. And as you bring the jaw forward, you bring the tongue forward and open up more room in the back of the throat. That also can be an effective therapy uh, for someone who couldn't tolerate uh, CPAP. If you have clinically significant sleep apnea and we find a successful treatment, uh, invariably uh, there's improvement in uh, how you feel during the day. So less sleepiness, uh, better concentration, uh, and the nice thing is people get home from work, they still have energy, they can go out, get on that exercise program and start losing that weight that's led to the development of sleep apnea. Treating sleep apnea is, is very um, rewarding because you're really treating, you're often really treating two people, not only the patient, but their bed partner as well. Because when people have significant apnea, uh, it's usually disrupting their bed partner's sleep as well. And when you're successful, both people come back saying, we're both sleeping better, we both feel better during the day. Mm -hmm.